Hello everyone and welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VBL Season 8.1 apparently. Um, Naranya and Uva draft breakdown. I am with Australian in exile. Big man, the big man. Say hello to the people. Hello, yes. <laughs> I have been... I've been deported over here, but I mean, I'm going back soon, so that'll be nice. It was a brief, a brief period of exile. Um, you know, sometimes you just have to, um, well, look, let's just not mention the region of in which you are currently exiled to. I think that would be better for everyone. Um, so, um, is this your first season with the VBL, or have you been in a previous season, like half the other people that I found out were randomly in seasons that I just wasn't in? No, I've never been in a season of VBL okay. before. Is this your first um, VGC draft slash draft period or do you have some experience? Yeah, it's my first VGC draft. I've done singles drafts okay. before. You have my condolences. But... <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely difficult coming in and then immediately having to think about double synergy. Oh, I meant um... from having had to play singles. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, singles is a bit of a drag. Yeah, I did um a singles Fiji uh, sorry singles Gen Nine League, and I missed a Hydro Pump once and I lost. I, that's actually not like a specific problem with singles, but um, I'm gonna pretend it is. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, yeah, you have, you have twice as many chances to hit your moves in this one, so exactly, exactly. Hydro um, Pump twice. I'm glad I'm not doing an exhibition match in this particular video because. Uh, in a video that is already would, should have come out by the time that this video goes live that I recorded earlier today, much earlier today, mind you. Um, I, I did not have a very good time RNG wise. I was it was games that I was well losing, but like crits that just rubbed the salt in the wound, you know. Mm. Well, I played two matches today, where I missed a rock slide on the final turn. Mm. It's happened twice. Just Terra Blast Rock. Stronger by five base power. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, here's a the, vi the video. Um, we we have the, the funny the funny chart. We uh, compare things tempo and long game. I I forgot to ask you before the video. Do you, do you want me to explain the concepts or are you familiar with them? I mean, I watched the first one. So okay. okay. When you say you watched the first one, you mean you watched the last one? The last one. Because I did two previous season as well. No, I didn't watch that. I okay, the, yeah, yeah. Just the, the last part. one. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Any any questions or anything that you have? You understand? I mean, you're a singles player. You understand the difference between HO and Hyperstall. Yes. Um. Okay. What's the difference between HO and Hyperstall? Well. Three turns in about five hundred turns. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking it that you're not like a small kid. Hyperstall is a meme for where people put like, say, Chansey onto a, an HO team. Right. It, 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 the, the colloquial term is Chansey offense, but like the uh, the derogatory term is Hyperstall. Um, <laughs> right. It's like I will run one defensive one that is not a pivot. That's it. I guess it has teleport now, so it would be a pivot. Uh, anyways. Um, Hakuna Rattata's team. This is by my uh, former co-host, the one, the only, Ray J. I did actually try to get Raymond on for this video, but unfortunately um, they were on vacation. Um, it's kind of like the previous season when I tried to get Poppin on for a video, but they were on their honeymoon. Uh, so for, uh, I guess it's just the times of year that um, VPL keeps popping up on. Uh, but instead, obviously, I've got the Bing Man. Um, and I just, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't feel like a downgrade. It's just not as funny as Ray and Ray, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Indeedy Female with Halucha. It's got the Psychic Terrain Synergy. Sylveon's got good spread moves. They have, like, this team is drafted in cores. Uh, like, Indeedy, Halucha, Tyranitar, Lycanroc, Luminion with every other Pokemon on the team because it's carrying them all on its back. Um... Like Bronzong with uh, the Trick Room. Pormo has Fake Out. Electros is immune to ground, which a few Pokemon are weak to. Bronzong is also immune to ground. 
If you Terra Electric the Bronzong and have it next to Electros, the Pokemon share no weaknesses. And yeah, also have no weaknesses. Sense. Also, there's a Banette. It's not a good Pokemon. No. Um, how would you generally feel about this team? Um, it's it's scary to look at. There's a lot of things that they can bring. Mm -mm. Um, it feels very wide. Yeah, it, it worries me a lot that you'd have to really look at counters for for many different different styles of play. Yeah, um, and they've got and Pokemon in all different like um speed ranges. I know there's a gap between um sorry, I am uh, Lycan Rock. Like Lycan okay, I guess they kinda don't like because right, Lycan Rock and Halucha are both infinity fast for most teams. Yeah. Like Lycan Rock and Sand and Halucha with on um, off. So you have to decide, do I want to pre prepare for, say, Limber, Halucha, or just like Halucha without terrain up? Um, Mold Breaker, I think, is the other ability it gets. And I think Lycanroc gets Steadfast, but also it's just like without Sand up. Uh, and if you're a Prankster, Rain, you probably do for Lycanroc. Or uh, well, Prankster Sun. Um, but like, these Pokemon are functionally infinitely fast, and then there's, what, Luminion at 90, and then I think the next fastest Mon is Ndidi at 85. Yeah, which is not typically known to be... I don't know how fast Pormo is. It is also 85 speed. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess that's actually not a very... Like, that's a really whack top end. Your, your top end yeah. goes from infinity to 85, and, you know, on Ndidi... What's Pormo's bulk? Is it good with Eviolite? I did have an Eviolite video, but I didn't really... It's 60, 40, 40. It is not good with Eviolite. Um, is Pormo the middle one or the baby? It's the baby. It's the it's the middle one because the middle, baby middle, one is yeah. um, cord repeatal. Yes. I, I don't think it's possible just from the names Pormo and Pormi to figure out which of those is the baby and which one's the middle. Um, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say this team is very wide. I need to remember it's Hakuna Rotata. Uh, this team is very wide. But I think it's got a few mons that aren't really mons. And then, in terms of tempo, it's got very high tempo. And it has some mons that can kind of long game, but I question how feasibly they can. Like, Tarantar can long game with screens, but they really have screens. Sylveon can absolutely long game if you've got, like, a fast Wisp, but their Wisp mon is camera up. I don't actually know if that gets Wisp, but I, I think mean, it does. No, but I mean, it's, yeah, camera like, usually doesn't... Their damage mitigation support. isn't great. Normally, redirection is something you kind of associate, like uh, indeed redirection especially is kind of something you associate more with offense than with um, like a long game sort of strategy. So I'd say this the team other... plays a bit towards tempo. Do you think that's fair? Yeah, I mean you've also got the like if you're running at sand, this, like like light rock without sand also likes to have that accelerock option. But the Psychic Train blocks that a little bit, but I mean, yeah, the team I mean, overall. Sure, but, yeah. you know, Ice Spinner exists and plenty of other ways. Yeah. And you could run in DD without own tempo. I wasn't thinking about anti synergy as much as I was thinking about, like, the tempo versus long game, whereas I think this team plays fairly into, heavily into tempo. Yeah, I think if you can get that whole butcher up and you can get the Lycan Rock and the Sand, it goes pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, it's got a lot of Pokemon that are either frail or are bulky with screens or snarl or intimidate. But it doesn't really have the support to dam damper that. I don't believe any of these Pokemon get access to Snarl, and certainly the fast Pokemon don't get access to dual screens. Uh, Indeedy is the fastest dual screens among, and again, 85, which I suppose is faster than most of the team, but it's only slightly above the average speed of every Pokemon, fully evolved Pokemon in the game, which is not yeah. incredible. And like you could run Trick Room and dual screens on Bronzong, but are you really gonna run one support attack move I don't, I don't know you could um i just feel like yeah despite having pokemon that can flourish in the long game they don't necessarily have the tools to do it so i think this leans towards tempo but it's not like you know it, it's not all the way tempo it just is more towards the middle yeah okay I mean, yeah do you want to bring us through our second team i think this one's seen a few transactions since the game has a sorry since the draft finish yeah i think they I don't know what they... Dropped. I think they dropped Staraptor, because I know they had Staraptor. Yeah. They, they and I soon Fletcher picked up Fungus. They have all of the Eviolite like Pokemon well. from my Eviolite video. <laughs> 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 they have four of them. Yeah, I mean, 
Fletchinder and, and Magneton are some of the bulkiest Pokemon in the game with EV Online. Anyways, the rest of the team, do, do you want to talk us through them? I mean, I think that the... No, it's say the Pokemon. Oh, we got Annihilate, Arcanine, Azumarill, Arbolivar, Ferrigiraffe, Cryogonal, Sandaconda. That is not... Yeah. yeah. Um, Impidimp, Magneton, Fletchinder, and Fungus. Thank you. Okay, now now the qualitative uh, analysis. Here we go. <laughs> Quantitative then qualitative. Um, this Pokemon's got a lot I of mean, funny support options. It can very much go long game. It's got a lot of long gamey sort of mods, but um, I don't think this team is really wide. This team is a few po focal Pokemon, and it has a bunch of support that they can slot. Yeah, Azumarill has a nickname. Yeah. Is it the only Pokemon that has a nickname on the dock? I mean, it might not be. It's the only one I've seen so far. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, I'd say this team is is relatively um, top heavy. Would you agree? Yeah. Not crazy because heavy. you can still slot. Like having having four top heavy mons is still something you can slot around pretty pretty easy. Um, yeah. And then like having those four at the bottom that all need Everlight, or, or the, that all really want Everlight. I mean, Impotent is absolutely terrible if you like because it's still going to die. Um, but oh yeah. The other three, yeah. yeah. Impidimp is like you run Focus Ash or you run Light Clay, and you hope that they uh, click a priority move that you put the screen up for. You know, like <laughs> you hope you get vacuum waves. Um, <sighs> Firegraph Brock's opposing priority, which is good because this team has some very strong priority users in Arc Nine, Azumarill, and Fletchinder. Obviously, technically, um, impotent prankster moves, but they're not damaging as much. It might get sucker. I have no idea if it gets sucker. It's not strong though. Yeah. Um, Fletchinder isn't strong, but it's clicking Brave Bird, so it's functionally strong. Even off of that seventy-three attack, um, impotent's forty-five attack. <laughs> yeah, it's not strong. <laughs> um, Terry speed Arcanine's funny. But yeah, I'd say this team definitely feels fairly top heavy, and it's just kind of like plug and play, where either you bring, like your team of six, it either consists of like a two or three top heavy mons, or two or, or like four of them, and then either two supports that are coming every game, or like three or four supports that you're plug and playing as well. I think it, it makes for a really interesting uh, modular way to prepare, um, and I think it leans pretty tempo, but not as tempo as Akuna Rattata's did. It's got the capacity for long game. You know, like if you have, if you do get two screens up with um, Impidimp and then like a Wisp off with Fletchinder or just like Intimidate Spam with Arcanine, um, mm. Annihilate can really go a long game for, with its bulk of Drain Punch. Uh, Rest, Shed Skin, Sandaconda is pretty long game. Flygon, once you Terra it so it only has one weakness and again have like Wisp Intimidate support to shore up its bad Fizz Def, it's got pretty good special bulk. And uh, having no weaknesses and recovers is okay. Um, mm. I'll believe a Harvest well, yeah. as well. It can go very fast if it needs to as well, with, mm. you know, Final Gambit, Half Annihilate, and Azumarill. Yeah, it, it leans tempo, but it does have options for the long game. So. Also, this Virginia Vikervolt's team name is like... I think it's genuinely the most common team name in all of Draft that I've seen. Um, just uh, just uh, like two days ago, I think, I joined another league. Uh, well, another person joined a league I was in with a different Virginia Vikervolts and like there was already years ago I think A Drive was the Virginia Vikervolts and it's like <laughs> there's just been so many people who've gone with that name maybe there's a I specific mean, it's team it's in reference to I I don't know if it is a specific team I think the Vikervolts just popular mod uh, yeah popular to put on on a logo any, at any time Virginia it's one of the Vikervolts what is it? As well. Uh, I might, I, it's possible I'm also just going completely insane. Because I would, I thought A Drive had it, but I don't know if I'm actually just completely A -Drive insane. A Drive had it at some point. I, is it? Is it Virginia? Oh. Well, maybe it was a different place. Maybe. Oh, it was the Minnesota Vikervolts. Oh yeah, no, you're right. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's weird. <laughs> was that actually A Drive? Yes. Yeah, it was. was okay. It. Sorry, they they changed the uh, the Google Images thing. Okay, so I just I've I'm just been smoking something. Um, 
So I, I've seen other Virginia Viking, but you're right, it's just Viking Vault that's popular. Um, anyways, this team, it's pretty good. Uh, it's very, very modular. I think teams towards the middle are pretty solid. Probably puts us a little bit more towards top heavy. But the mods are very flexible on this team, which is the thing I like a lot. And the modes are very flexible. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, completely agree with that. Alright, now we come to, uh... One of the luckiest players of all time, but only in exhibition matches against me. Bibraf. <laughs> what can I say about this team? Um, I, 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 in, in the video that I'm pretty sure is up by now, I don't think I'm going to change my mind and put this up first. Um, I did an exhibition match where I used this team. I didn't like. I didn't. Um, I didn't use half the good bots on this team because they're just really awkward in some matchups. So it's definitely a pretty, a pretty um wide team. So Grim, so Titan, Paldean Fire Tauros. So it's fire fighting type, and it's got a signature fire type move, Raging Ball, that removes screens while attacking oh, Corv, Toxtricity, Frost Lass, Lycanroc Dusk, you know, Cheeto Dustman, um, Creedent, Rotom Wash, Grumpig, and Marini. Uh, they're all Pokemon. Yeah. Do I have more substantive comments about that? Uh, the only Pokemon I didn't consider bringing to that specific matchup I was building for was Marini, and that's only because I didn't need White Guard. Marini is pretty tanky, and access to White Guard is good. Um, all these Pokemon are really solid. Like, this is a very wide team. Yeah, there's a lot of different, like, there's a, there's a wide variety of Pokemon you can definitely bring to anything if you prepare for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, to I... The white background here. Um, yeah, very wide team. Uh, I would say it plays pretty towards the long game, right? The yeah, only short game I mean, mon is really Toxtricity. And... Yeah, and Dusk Rock, sorry. There. Sorry, you were saying something? You got Gradient as well for fast game with it, and it's a Titan for potential okay. belly drum use. So, do you know what the good thing about Gradient is? No. Uh, its ability heals at 33% when oh, yeah, you eat a berry. So, um, a citrus berry heals at 58%. No. Yes? 58, I think. So, like, Greedent can easily go long game. With what, Recycle and... I mean, even not just with... The, even just with Belly Drum, Drain Punch. Uh, yeah. I mean, it turns out when you have, like, four HP bars, <laughs> you're doing alright. Um, I ran Sub Recycle, so that... Sorry, so not, not Sub Recycle, Sub Belly Drum, because I knew that it'd be at 80-odd after both of them. Right. Um, so Titan, you can belly drum and do short game, but it's really bulky, so you can, uh, like, 170 base HP is definitely a mod that can go late game, especially with dual screens. Like, this dual screens turns this team from a thing that's maybe going for, you know, like, four or five turn games, like, pretty mid-range, to going easily for, until, like, you outlast those screens. So I, I'd say this team's very heavily towards the long game, it's pretty damn wide. I think all of its Pokemon are usable, I think it's probably, like, the widest team. You can very easily see yourself not bringing any one of these Pokemon to a game as well. Yeah. No, none of these Pokemon feel forced. Obviously, Grim is good, but there are plenty of matchups where you don't feel pressured to. And certainly is in Team of Four. So I'd say yeah. it's got a bit. It's got a bit of tempo. Like Rock Dusk and Frostlass. Like Frostlass, you can run a bulky Frostlass with screens and, and like a, a Soul Fest. But without that, it's really just a very short game on. Um, and these two mods kind of compete for Focus Ash. Uh, but yeah, beyond that, no, it's pretty good. I reckon I reckon it's a very long game team. Um, and incredibly yeah, wide. Sorry. Say your thing. Yeah, no, I completely, <laughs> completely agree with like, that. It's like, just looking at it and having to prep for something like that. Mm. You know, you have to pretty much every single thing. Do you know what the problem is? Go, what is what is the problem? He, has to pref using this team, <laughs> which is the same uh, the same problem. Yeah. I guess that's true. I mean, uh, I only have about that was that, that was the problem I had with this team. Unfortunately, not all of us are absolute legends like BBRAF or BBRAF. 
Okay, here's someone else who I'm hoping to do a video with, but I'm having communication issues. We have the one and the only, Grandma's Toga Kisses and Sukapa. Um, they have done some absolutely great work in terms of content so far. Um, and their team is something. Yeah, you got Dragonite, Clef Key, Toad's mm. Cruel, Scalar Dirge, Persian, Quaquaval, Scyther, Paparaja, Glamora, Rotomo, and Oinkalone. Yeah, Scythe is so bulky with Eviolite, especially if you Terra it out of a Forex weakness. Um, Dragonite, really strong one. Uh, mm. What was the other thing? Klefki's funny. Copperage is really strong. Skeledurge is probably one of the best late game mons, just kind of period. Um, and Glamora as a mon, if you get hit and set up Toxic Spikes, then it really... Um, it leans into playing long game. Like, Toxic Spikes are probably the only good hazard in VGC. Um, yeah. Would you, would you yeah, agree? Yeah, just the set up is always something that plays on, on your mind as well mm. when you have them. And with a lot of the, you know, Poison not exactly being one of the best types. It's great if you have it's... Levitate. <laughs> That's what, um, that's what old Hydreigons taught us. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> not too many poison types with Levitate, apart from, yeah, yeah. obviously, from Terra. But the, just having it's that strong. toxic, it's, yeah. Toxic spikes are, like, the fact that it can set the toxic spikes up passively really helps. Um, yeah, I mean, this team seems good. Uh, like we were saying, Rotom can go late game. It can quick game, but it's a pretty good late game on. <sighs> Redirection is generally fast game, but you can redirect defensively. Um, Quackwivel's funny guy. Persian has damage mitigation options, so it can definitely like game. I believe it has reach, but I could just be wrong. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, things. Oh, also, Klefki screens. I think I meant to lead with that, but forgot to. So I'd say this team is long game. How do you feel about this team in terms of like? Do you actually expect it to bring all of its options, or do you think it's going to stay fairly focused around some of the main offensive threats, and maybe slot a couple of the things? Like, in what situation are you going to bring, like, if you were Persian and Scyther, and you're both looking at them as options for speed control, which of them are you likely to bring as the speed control option? I imagine it would be Persian, just because Fake Out yeah. Icy Wind is... Yeah, Fake Out and Icy Wind are both... ...more oppressive like than just Scyther Tailwind, and if you're not committing terror to it, weaknesses are pretty not great and it can't run covert cloak or andy feel like on the same set yeah um yeah i mean yeah sharing the ice with, with dragonite and toad school as well it is it is a really really wide team with well i'm, I'm saying is it really a wide team or like did you just not yeah. bring half of the pokemon because you have better versions of similar pokemon I mean, the thing is, I apart from the Cyber Persian sort of thing. I mean, I have to I mean, they... wonder: Do you bring Toad Scroll very often? Like, is Copperaja, like, is Glamora coming outside of that funny interaction? Klefki really hates matching up into any of the opposing prankster Pokemon because they taunt it. Um, yeah. Most of the other prankster Pokemon are Dark types. The only other one is Grafii, and you know, it does resist Fairy. Um, like, is, is Quackwivel... I mean, Quackwivel scales passively, so it can do stuff. I just... I actually, like, I genuinely... I don't know if we're going to see the team switching up as much, or if the good Pokemon are so much better than the other Pokemon that you just don't see the other ones coming. Yeah, it's difficult to say with yeah. with that. I think that... It's, it, it might depend more on matchups and what you see with other, other teams, but yeah, hmm. it might only switch out on one a week and not be that wide. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like Dragonite and Skeledurge are kind of mandatory basically every game. Yeah. And then, you know, I feel like there's a lot of, um, sort of redundancy with the other Pokemon. And I just, yeah, I do question if we're actually going to be seeing that versatility that it looks like it should have. Uh, also, I don't know why they went Oink alone, but it doesn't really matter, it's two points. Um, I mean, I don't know. I yeah, I'd, I'd say I'm going to put this team towards the middle, and this team is 
definitely long game structured, right? Yeah, yeah, with the unaware scale of dirge and Dragonite with multi scale of hope. Dual Just, screens, uh, yeah. Klefki, uh, even Quackwivels. One of the things I like a lot about it a lot is that it is relatively bulky. Um, and yeah, Rotom is tanky, Copperaja is tanky, Scyther with Eviola is pretty tanky. Uh, yeah. I guess I'd lean it, yeah, towards the middle, but um, a bit on the long game side. Definitely yeah, no. faster than BP Rats. This is like a mid game, mid rangey sort of team. All right, um, Pop and Fresh and the Phoenix Suns. Uh, so I, I, I am a little bit biased regarding this team, as I did a conscript Hoppin as my interpreter, and he interpreted to me that Flamigo was a great Pokemon, and I was a failure for getting round four instead of round two. Um, also, Vigoroth is good. Uh, Koldengo is just so much better than every other Pokemon that these other people took first. I don't know why anyone else, like, I, I can kind of understand Annihilate, but like, first overall in DD, uh, like, Grimmsnarl, round one, Dragonite, yeah, maybe, but Koldengo is just so good. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is. I, yeah. I can understand I getting two tr t um, Trick Room setters and then like a really, sorry, not Trick Room, two Tailwind setters and then a really good Trick Room to support it. Um, and then like, Gotta Ganachi. And uh, you know Serena, so that they can't uh, priority it. It's just good. This team, this team is top heavy in terms of it's mostly focused around supporting Goldengo and Garganarkle, but they're so good that that's fine. Yeah, no, I agree with that. You just yawn people with Figaroth, and you took the only Scrappy Pokemon in the format, Flamigo, so they can't um, Scrappy kill Goldengo. Um, This, 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 this team's got really good support around. I, I'd say this practically feels like a very top heavy team. Now, Poppin is the king of switch ups. He did win his conference last season. I cannot remember what the conference was called. I also don't remember what my conference was called last season. Uh, <laughs> but he, he did uh, he did win, so he's very good, very good coach. Um, and I was saying that this is a very top heavy team, and this team plays into the long game, but it can go tempo. No, sorry, this playing team plays in tempo, but it can't go long game. That's the opposite of what I wanted to say. <laughs> uh, the the tail, tail room is a very aggro comp, but Gaganaku and Goldengo can both very easily go long game. It's just that, like, Vigoroth can as well. Um, but I question if Sabrina, Flamigo, Talonflame, you know, Cravominable, Haxorus can. Is the comp like a Goldengo, Gaganaku, Slowbro, and Vigoroth? That's, that's a long game comp. And then you can switch up the Vigoroth and Slowbro for like uh, Talonflame and Flamigo, but Flamigo doesn't get body press, so. See, I love you, my friend. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, feels, team feels very top heavy though. Yeah, yeah, it definitely does, and I feel like, yeah. When it's got, got the option for mix-ups on the lower end, they just don't feel anywhere near as strong as the top end does. Yeah, when I mean, you've got, yeah, essentially the threat of Goldengo and Gargano. Also, wow, just, this team, like, yeah, this team needs oh. speed control a lot, because it really is just Talonflame, Haxorus. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Borealis, Beartex. Do you want to bring us through your boys' team? Can do. So, they have Garchomp, Sableye, Rabscot, Jumpluff, Hormot. Miss Magius, Flareon, Darkspun, Mabostiff, Rotom Frost, and Aloma Mola. So, do you say Darkspun? Yeah. It's, it's like a, it's like Dash Hound, a Dash Hound. So you say Dashbun. Uh, I think that's the pun at least. I don't know why it's in Spain and not Germany or even France. <laughs> um, they have the dogs. Wow, where do. are my dogs at? Is the other Garchomp team yay or nay? Um, I mean, <sighs> I feel like they. <laughs> I didn't expect this to they, leave you quite as on the spot. As <laughs> yeah, see, Gar like my my main thing when I saw the draft was just get something that I thought was really strong and then try and put stuff around that. Yeah, they have um, two revival pluses. Um, no. I mean, I've got well. The the uh, you have Pormot as well, right? I don't have Pormot. No. No, you have Rapska. Smeagol. I have. 
Yeah. Okay. So what do you, you think the Rapska, the Rapska Gotchop comp is where it's at? So my... Does Sableye get gravity in this format? Which one? Does Sableye get gravity in this format? I don't know. I'm checking. I didn't look much at Sableye. I thought... It's Revival not seem Blessing to. Really good with Garchomp. Um, and I've tried... Like, I've, I've been trying to use They've it a bit. They've got two ground immunes. Sorry. Two levitate users and then jump off as ground immunes. Yeah. Jump off's a good kill I... setter for Scarchomp because it's yeah. fast and it can also redirect. But then they click Icy Wind. <laughs> um. Yeah, Icy Wind. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a problem. Yeah. I mean, you run Covert Cloak on Garchomp pretty often, anyways, I think. Not Covert Cloak. Clear Amulet. The... Yeah. Um. So uh, if you Terra into not Ground Dragon, which is every single Terra type, including Ground or Dragon, um, you don't really care about Icy Wind that much. No. But um, Jump Off I does. Just, <laughs> I looked at Pormot as well, but I couldn't justify taking it for 8 points. That's um, funny, because I think it's a very good 8-pointer. Like, in terms of 8-pointers, it's so strong. Have you seen a Double Shock into Terra Electric Double Shock? Because mm. um, Double Shock yeah. is like Burner, where it removes your type. But if you tear electric, yeah. you can click it twice in a row, which is really dumb. And fake out revival blessing a really good trade up. Also got CC. It has that iron fist ice punch. It's got so many good moves. I, I rate Paul up pretty highly. Um, like if we go back to the Mons in eight, I'd say it's better than Quarkville. The other mods in 8 are broken. Goldengo is the best mod in 8. It would also be the best mod in 9, I think. Um, similar to Mousehold in terms of quality, but like it's hard to know. It's hard to put offensive Pokemon relative to support Pokemon. Generally yeah. speaking, let alone in a new format where you're kind of getting a sense of it. But every time I've seen Pormo hit the field, it's done insane work. Um... The Flareon Darkspawn combo is funny. I think Mavostiff is a pretty good Mon. Um, does it have Defiant? I know it's got. It's got Intimidate and Guard Dog and something else, Stakeout, I think. Oh, Stakeout, that's right. Um, Outback Steakhouse. The, 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 the place that all Australians love to go, right? Yes. Of yeah, that's a genuine Australian brand. And the Americans are totally not being conned. We have them everywhere, especially in the outback where everything is. Yep, in the outback. I like. I was, I was just um, <laughs> I was like, I think I was like, I was gonna make a very dark joke, but I am. Uh, no one would get it, and then at some point, like the uh, Australian federal police are gonna pick me up because they they found <laughs> it. So I'm not going to make that joke. Um, <laughs> but you know, the I was just. Gonna, is, I, I was well, say I was, I was in the Northern the, Territory, instead. Right. I'm going out of state. I was in the Northern Territory. Um, you know, I was a uh, oh, probably about eight hours drive out of Uluru. The only thing that you know the international people know yeah, in yeah, the all of Australia, right. let alone in the Northern Territory. Um, maybe the Sydney Opera House if we're lucky. Uh, and uh, you know, it was uh, Outback Steakhouses all around. You know, that's where they, yeah. that's where they grow in the wild. You know, they actually they do grow on trees. They do, they do. It's, yep, the, yeah. the main trees that are in that specific area of the Northern Territory. You know, I've gone yeah, south of the, the rainforest area, and, you know, <laughs> and everything. <laughs> but, well, you know, the Great well, Simpson I, Desert is famous for its many um, outback steakhouse trees. Yeah, well, of course. Oh, of, they're all along the highways that we've we've built way out in the outback to get across the country. There is a very quickly. single highway. <laughs> it goes north to south. There's a and train, the train line along it. <laughs> just got outback steakhouses all the way along it. Yeah, yeah grow, they they grow on trees. You know, we've got um, you know, rovers have to uh, uh, drovers. I meant to say drovers, and I said rovers like the the dog or the um American car. Uh, drovers have to uh make sure their sheep don't get uh, accidentally picked up by one of them. You know, you got to make sure that yeah. your uh, your your, your flock very is very not. Dangerous yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're mustering him. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> after that very weird detour, <laughs> I don't even know how we got to the Outback Steakhouse joke. Where was that from? That was from Stakeout. Oh, Stakeout! 
<laughs> yeah. Um, my boss is a funny guy. Intimidate... Good. Um, apparently people like Intimidate is basically unusable. Um, I would never use an Intimidate Pokemon in my life. I will Terra Grass uh, Flash Fire Arcanine every time, and then click beat up into it, forgetting that it wasn't justified, before I ever use Intimidate. Um, and stuff like that. I had a punchline, I just the, forgot what it was. <laughs> with with Rapscott, one of the things that I saw, so it's the only Pokemon in this generation that gets access to speed swap. Is that true? Um, yeah. Why? Yeah. That, that's I don't such know. such a cool they, move. Why did they give it to, uh, they gave yeah. it to a couple of ones last gen, but a lot less than the previous, and they gave it to nothing. One's up they, by level they, up and it's not a TM, and it's apparently not an egg move either. No, so it's literally only Rabscoff that has access to speed swap. Why? And it, it only has about 440 speed, I think. Yeah, ah, 45 that's a bit speed. Fast. That's a bit fast for a speed swap one. It, Normally you want them to be it, either very slow fast. or very fast. Yeah, but I mean, still, like being able to cripple something or and take its speed. So, is like, still speed decent. swap is generally made so that something can use Trick Room effectively. And then yeah. you speed swap their Pokemon to make it so that they can't use Trick Room effectively. Um, yeah, Bronzo, I mean, I was thinking Bronzo, more like previous gens with the Tailwind setter as well. If you have that Tailwind get set up, hopefully Rabska can live a hit and then speed swap something, so it has absolutely awful speed. Yeah. Um, so this team but. is wide? Question mark. <laughs> I mean... It's got Garchomp and five slots yeah. that you can put any of the other Pokemon in. Except pretty much. Lola Mola. <laughs> yeah. As someone who was a really big fan of Lola Mola for a long time, I don't think it's very good right now. That said, it's, at least it can use its attack stat effectively currently, but I don't think it has access to yeah. Muddy Water at all, which is sad. But it's, it's got high attack and low special attack, but Scald was such a broken move that you would run special. Uh, but like, I've Oko'd Bishop with Wake Up Slap before. Um, in thing. singles, and I, I don't know if this is to some extent true in BGC, but Expert Belt is like a really good boosting item for defensive um, defensive regenerator mons because they don't take life orb chip. And yeah. the, the general downside to it is that it's lower power, but you're going to have a lower power with regen mons anyway because they're defensive, and it yeah, well, doesn't looking, give you back HP, looking, but regen does. Yeah, it does, you're not looking to do that much damage unless you're hitting a super effective move. Yeah. I mean, like, generally that, speaking, on, on an offensive mon, it's worse than just running an item that boosts the type of the thing you're move, using. Like, in yeah. singles draft, they tend to the, allow Nat Dex items, so I just use the plates. But, you know, say Wave Incense to boost the power of water type moves. Mm -hmm. um, Borealis Bear Ticks, I'd say this is a wide team. It's not the widest. I think Garchomp is a relatively mandatory mon, but that's fine, it's Garchomp. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, you have to use one of the top five Pokemon in the format. No. What a shame. You have to prep. Um, and then beyond that, I'd say it's relatively tempo. Rabsker and Pormot are both tempo mons that facilitate tempo. Sableye is a mon that facilitates tempo. Jumpluff is a mon that facilitates tempo. Miss Magius is frail, so it facilitates tempo. Rotom Frost is an ice type. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess Mabostiff does slow the game down. Uh, it's pretty... not that bulky. 80, 90, 70. Um, a little Moller is slow, but it's not good. And Dashboard yeah. and Flareon. Like, Flareon's strong if you use Tempo on it, but you can do defensive. This team can go longer game. Sableye has dual screens now, which is a great buff for it. But, um... I'd say this team definitely seems like a pretty Tempo team to me. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Um, I'd say it's the most tempo team so far. I'm gonna say a bit more um, wider. No, it's right. Yeah, bit less probably. Wide. <laughs> yeah. I said it's wider, but I, I keep forgetting the, that I'm trying to say the opposite of the thing I wound up doing. All right. Now it's just on to you're just everything's upside down. <laughs> it's left and right now. Um, boom. Eleven. Yeah. I mean, the Americans are so confused when I say, "Oh, yeah, the liberals are the right wing party." And then I remind them that all the parties are the right wing party. Yes. It's called politics, baby. Politics. Politics, the liberals well. are the Tories. 
Four I party. I don't know what the Tory's actual party name is. Um, over here. Well, I don't know what it is either, to be honest. UKIP. <laughs> You're probably too young to get that joke. <laughs> Um, Tinkerton, Grafii, Hariyama, Orank, Salamence, Magnazone, Slaking, Houndoom, Cacturn, Toxpex, and Jigglypuff. I'm pretty sure Tinkerton was first overall pick in this draft. It was. Bomb chose it first. Um, every time I think of Bomb, I think of the, the World War II one. Yeah. <laughs> Which is... Like, I don't know if I'm going completely insane. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was like, okay. Um, well, he, 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 he lived in till the 1970s in the UK, so I'm gonna say that he was not considered a Nazi. I mean, probably. I only know him because he, he's in Hoi for. Anyways, every time I think of I see, I think of um, Boim. Uh, and that's probably because when I played him, it was in BDSP. When I was using all my Pokemon were named after different types of ship. You know, like, uh, Corvette or, um, area uh, anyways yeah. I like the logo the logo upgrade was uh, very powerful um, I don't know <laughs> Tigaton fake out Hariyama fake out Ments intimidate Ranguru trick room there was another trick room on no I'm going insane uh, Houndoom snarl Salamence intimidate I said that already Grafire, Slay King. I think this is bad. Um, like, it's not good. But I applaud you if it works. Um, beyond that, this team just seems like random Pokemon. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. Apart from the Trick Room with Hariyama. I just... Sure. But Hariyama's not that slow. It's like 43, I think. Yeah, I mean... Oh, yeah, It is 50. 50. It's even faster. That is yeah, pretty fast. Like, Toxpex at 35, sure. Jigglepuff at, at 20, sure. But, um, it's not. Yep. I don't, I don't really Jigglypuff. know how to feel about this team. This team feels wide, but that's just because I don't think any of the Pokemon are good. Um, Salamence yeah, is alright. I mean, Orangaroo's really it, good, but it doesn't spot anything great. Magnum's pretty bulky. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't really know. Um, I don't like Refire very much, which doesn't help. It's just the old version. Um... Seems wide. Did you, did, it has a it has a quick game, Grafia, Slay King. Everything else feels yeah. kind of long gamey. Mm. Especially the Tox effects. Um, like Hecton's frail, but it doesn't really mean anything. Like uh, Tinkerton's one of the bulkiest Pokemon on the format. Um, it like this is all adjusted for typing. Salamence is pretty bulky, especially with Intimidate factored in. Rangaroo was tanky. Hariyama is really bulky, especially when you do have thick fat to reduce the power of fire and ice type moves, specifically ice type moves aimed at Salamence, I guess. Um, Handoom is frail, but that doesn't really matter. It's mostly there for Snarl spam, and its spit F is good. It's only its fist F that's bad, and you know, it's like this is a format that's defined by strong physical attackers and a f limited number of very strong special attackers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lots yeah. Of Not at all. Physical attack. Basically, all just like mediocre special mon, uh, mediocre physical mods. There's no, there's no, there's no physical attackers that are good in the format. Definitely not slaking. Um, so I'd say I put this a bit towards tempo, but it can play to the long game. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Are there any other comments you have about this? Am I being mean? <laughs> I just, yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean, I just don't see a big. I don't know piece. what this team does, like so that's of, what confuses me. A lot of the teams have a have a big piece that they're looking to put in, like the Goldango or the Garchomp or the Annihilate. I mean, even in the Annihilate um, team, I like I, I one of the things I liked about the team is you could not bring Annihilate on that team and it still looked good. My problem is that the only one yeah, that looks good on this team is Tinkerton and Salamence, and they don't. 
I don't know if that's enough. Like, I just, I don't like Grafai. Eh? Hariyama's okay, but you already had Tinkaton. Ranguru doesn't support anything well. I don't like Slaking. I don't like Magazone. I mean, I like Magazone. It's, like, it's okay. It doesn't really make that much sense with this comp. I don't like how I'm doing that much. Cacturn is bad. Toxpex is not... Like, Tax Toxpex is just Wide Guard. And Jigglypuff is just Parasong. But they don't have Trapping. Yeah. Is the idea that you the... can um, doodle Daddy's Diglett? Because he's not going to bring Diglett. <laughs> like, that's the problem. <laughs> he just doesn't bring Diglett, and then you're screwed. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. Um, oh, I've yeah. Bit confusing, but I think that's a, it's a product of Tinkerton being the first pick. I mean, Tinkerton. You know what? Fair. Like, I, I don't mind. I don't mind it. Tinkerton's a really good mod. It's really bulky. It's got access to fake out. It's got a really strong move. Yeah. Um, it, I just don't know. I, I think that Grafai slaking is actually why I hate this. Like round two Grafai. I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be shocked if Grafai didn't even go in our pool. It didn't, no. Yeah, it didn't it didn't even go in our pool. So taking it round two, after taking Tinkerton round one, and then yeah. getting Hirayama, which is kind of redundant, kind of not with Tinkerton. It's in the same thing if it's a bulky Pokemon with fake out that hits hard. Um You know, I just don't know what this team is doing. Also it doesn't help yeah, that well the fastest mod is Salamence slash Slaking at hundred. Unless Slaking might be 110. Oh, Grafai is 110. That's true. Um, but it's a priced Pokemon. I guess it's an also an unburdened Pokemon. I think it has Thief. Not Thief. Pickpocket. But it's not good. I don't know. Yeah, not, not a big Grafai fan. Alright, on to uh, Goose and their plundering Berserkers. Do you want to bring us through the team? Yes, yeah, so they've got... King Gambit, Serral Edge, Noivern, Jolteon, Mudsdale, Slowking, Frostmoth, Gardevoir, Ditto, Simeon, and Knucklestack. So, uh, I like every single Pokemon on this draft, except for Ditto, who I hate, but is useful. I hate Ditto, though. Um, like, King Gambit is really good. One of the better ones in the format. Like, it went pretty late in Alpool, and I, I, I consider taking it, but didn't wind up doing it. Serral Edge was really good. I was doubtful on it. Then I got pandered it when I took over someone in a speed tour. And it turned out, actually, it, it turns out the Ghost Fire is a good typing. Yeah, I, I was definitely thinking of taking Serral Edge at some point Lovely in my drop. But... Jolty on good. I mean, yeah, after I took Armor Rouge, I was kind of not doing Serral Edge, but I almost did. <laughs> um, Jolty on's really good. Mudsdale's really good. Sloking is usable. Like, it's not broken, but th the crazy thing about it now is it's very hard to stop at setting up Trick Room if they're willing to commit item and terror, because Oblivious makes it immune to Taunt, then you can um, turn into a Grass type or a Ghost type, sorry, to make it so that you're immune to Spore and Fake Out, or theoretically what you I think the best thing is Lumberry and Ghost type, so you Terra Ghost so you're immune to Fake Out, you have Oblivious so you're immune to Taunt, and then because you have Lumberry, if you get put to sleep, or paralyzed, um, you can still set up. Yeah, trick 100% room. guaranteed to set up trick room. And for Osmoth, it turns out having an ability that doubles your special defense is good, and the only thing holding it back was its typing, and when your typing only matters at, to make you stronger when you've become another typing, that's good. Gardevoir is insane. I don't know how it lasted till round, what's this, eight? Round eight? Round eight? Um, Ditto was a funny guy. It's kind of a counterplay to very, very fast teams. Sorry, not very fast, very scaly teams that use um, screens and stuff to get a very big mod. Persimian's a funny guy. Receiver is um, actually kind of okay with King Gambit because King Gambit dies, then Persimian gets Supreme Overlord, which is good. I don't know if there are any other abilities you care about passing here that much so define is generally better especially when you have i mean like king gambit literally gets attack race into defiant if you are not supreme overlord but yeah mudsdale is also immune to intimidate because of own tempo uh, and knackle stack is really good we talked about it in my eviolet video that one is really really good soul cure is broken and its bulk is insane mr bing 
I mean, looking at that as well, the, the speed tiers for everything, you've got... Neuvon fast, Jolteon fast. The Neuvon and the Jolteon are really fast, but Simeon. then after that your next Seraledge. fastest is the 85 with Seraledge. I mean, that seems okay to me, because you have Neuvon okay. tamed. Um, Just you have, maybe you know, something. Other options to speed control. The thing is that Seraledge, Gardevoir and Persimian are all good Scarfers, and they actually care about the speed. To, to contrast to Pormo and Indeedy F. Yeah. Um, but also that Tailwind... I guess Halucha has Tailwind. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I was overheating on the Halucha. Um, no event, good. And the, their Trick Room options are still really strong. I like it. Yeah, Mudsdale. Mudsdale, Knackle Stack, Frostwolf. Very, very strong with that Trick Room. And King Gappers. King Gappers are really good Trick Room abuser. Yeah, King Gappers. And it's also good in Tailwind, and they have both scary um yeah so i like the plundering berserker is coached by goose i think they have a good team i think that team is very wise the only mon that is yeah. difficult to bring is ditto because that's incredibly matchup specific but anything else is just like you know like she's good um and then their team can play into the long game pretty easily but i'd say it focuses like it indexes on tempo would you agree yeah i agree i think that yeah you can definitely, yeah, you can definitely stay in the um, game for a while with that the Slow King and the Frostmoth, but they... Frostmoth doesn't want... have recovery, which sucks. Does it not? Oh. No, there's no Roost. Unless it got this gen, but it didn't last gen, which actually, I think, made it really whack last gen. Like, even in singles, I would you'd struggle to use it because it, it lacked access to Roost. But yeah, overall, it's just... Alright. Definitely wants to go fast, but can go slow if needs. Sorry, I just saw that the next thing is the uh, President of the United States. God bless America. God bless America? God bless America. Freedom. Philly cheesesteaks. Tex-Mex food, like hard tacos. All of these things are embodied by um, <laughs> households that only have one child. <laughs> All of these things are embodied by our next coach. The one, the only, the eponymous, the V in VBLS stands for Victor and the Victor is always Tay. Literally did not drop a single game. Every single one of their sets they won in two games last season, including the post-season battling against Poppin, the other champion. Tay is a monster, and also really funny, and the, most of the funny is at my expense. No, I mean, not most of it, but the stuff that's on the comments of my videos, so. Did you want to, do you want to respond? Surely, surely with a team like that, it's just a good team, isn't it? This team's really good. They're all value. The, the, the mons, so like, um, Morgrim, five, really good. Amrush, like six or seven. I don't know, I got it there as well. I thought it was really good value. Mouse hold eight, pretty good. Kilowattrel at five or six was absolutely insane. Um, it went round two. I was going to take it round two in my pool. It's insane to me that it got to round was, three in yeah, that pool. I was, I, I was going to take it round two as well if it got um, if it got back. Maybe. Appleton, I wanted the same. Uh, the same. Uh, maybe it might have been the round after. It was definitely round um, eight or nine. I was looking at getting Appleton. Vaporeon is not the mono I was looking at getting. Lucario is a really solid option because its uh, priority is really good. Backscalibur is a mon that I was curious about. Haunter was one of the best, um, one of the best lower point uh, Icy Wind users. Donphan has now got access to Ice Spinner on top of Ice Shard, so its damage is really good and it also disrupts opposing terrain teams because Ice Spinner, if you do it into Arbeliever, removes the terrain. Last I checked on Showdown, at least. I don't know if that's still true, and it just was misimplemented and changed. Also, Dreadnought or Shell Smash. This team is just yeah. insane. <laughs> like, every mod in this team yeah. you have to cry about. Just glad I don't have to play it. What's the worst mod in this team, would you say? Um... The worst mod on this team. Maybe the, I don't know, maybe the Vaporeon, but I think the, Vaporeon, the Vaporeon, okay. Vaporeon still 
Fantastic. You can still do a lot with it. But in, in yeah. my opinion, I'd say Vaporeon is one of the top three mods on this team. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting perspective. I was going to say that Donphan was the uh, the worst one. Um, maybe Dreadnought. Probably Dreadnought. Um, I think Vaporeon is really yeah. good. I'd say the top three on this team are Baxcalibur, Vaporeon, and Armor Rouge. Uh, it's probably like Mouse Hold, Killer Watch, or Morgrim are all kind of in the same spot. They're really good. Um, they're really good support Pokemon. Lucario then is like a good secondary abuser. Appleton's a good secondary abuser. Dreadnought is a good secondary abuser. And then Haunter's okay because it's got the icy winds. I mean, like, I don't know. Dreadnought's only good because they have friend guard redirection. Otherwise, it just sucks. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, Donphan and Dreadnought are kind of in the thing of like. Dreadnought is good because they have really good support. And Donphan is just generally like okay. And then Haunter is also pretty solid. Um, this team's really good. I have this team just. It, it's heavily into wide and it's just into the long game. Um, because, you know, even their follow me mon is friend guard. Like, there's so much that yeah. these mons can chunk hits. Morgrim is such a broken mon. Um, do you agree with that assessment? Yeah, no, I do think it's just a little bit. Yeah, it's very wide. There's a lot, like, it, it, I mean, saying how hard it is to choose the worst mon yeah. on this team is just shows how wide it is and how many things you can bring. To be fair, um, I think I have a similar problem with Boehm's team, but that's just because it's a race to the bottom. <laughs> mm. oh, I don't know. You know. I can say one thing about Boehm's team. If they dropped a crocodile, it would be the worst one on that team. I think that's true for most teams. But yeah, South Texas Slowpokes, this team is insane. Um, yeah. what, what's the thing? God save the president, or whatever? I don't know. The Americans, I don't know what they do. I mean, the thing is, no one even says anything about our politicians. <laughs> Could you imagine if someone... <laughs> Dude, plenty of people say things about our politicians, like... Uh, didn't your last Prime Minister shit himself in a Maccus? Yeah. True enough. <laughs> um, or... They they do the really weird myth of Harold Holt disappeared and no one cared. Like, there weren't, like, race riots and, like, assault against the Japanese and Chinese Australians because they blamed either him of being a Japanese spy who left defect, defected Japan or to have being assassinated by the Chinese. And, like... It was really obvious, though. He was assassinated by the CIA. Like, if, if a world leader is assassinated yeah. and they didn't like the CIA, it's generally the CIA. <laughs> like, it's really obvious. I did, I did an assignment on it in school. Like, they, they still make us learn about Harold Holt. He's, like, the only Prime Minister, historically, that we learn about who didn't lead us through, like, a world war. And, like, yeah. it's really yeah, obvious he was just killed by the CIA. <laughs> like... <laughs> uh. Um, but that's right. it. The funniest thing is the people like, oh, you know, his witnesses were there. It's like, yeah, his wife and then the guy whose wife he was cheating on his wife with were the witnesses. I was <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah the, the Harold Holt misinformation thing is, is always weird. They're like, oh, no one cared. And I'm like, dude, I wish you knew how much people cared for no real reason. <laughs> yeah, I think they... Uh, anyways, yeah. on to Sora and the Dova Delmas. Do you want to take us through this team? So they've got the High Dragon, the Meowskarada, right. the Sorry, did you get the third mono? Yep. Uh -huh. Okay, so you look at the you look at these first three mods, that's a that's a that's a like top cut regional team there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got Florgus, Scizor, Gotharita, Toad School, Belly Bolt, Cloitza, Glaceon, and Snova. Why the one they have that three I don't... Light mods. Yeah, the one that I don't really get, and I was wondering if you could fill me in, was Belly Bolt. I haven't seen much of it at all, and I was... Okay, so it's stronger than Regieleki. However, what the fuck? <laughs> it's, it's, it's really slow, but it's not slow enough to be amazing in Trick Room. It's just okay in Trick Room. Um, but it is functionally stronger than Regieleki. I right, think it has worse the, coverage like, than Regieleki. It definitely has worse coverage than Dynamax Regieleki, because all it gets is Muddy Water and Chilling Water, the 50 base power one. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I used it in-game, and then it died, because I was not as locking. Ah. It's just... 
okay. I don't know. I wish it was better. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah. it'd probably be better if charge also gave it the spadef boost. But yeah, signature ability is if it gets hit by an attack, it gets charge, which means it doubles the base power of its next electric yep. type move. Uh, it's got a higher base right. special attack than Regieleki at 103 versus 100, and double is more than 1.5. Yes. I, I don't know, just, just in case you weren't aware. Hey, it's just in case. Um, yeah, Toad School Goth and Snowver redundancy is weird. Snowver Glaceon, I understand. So maybe the Snowver is not running it, but Goth and Toad School are both ones that really like Eviolite. I guess you can sash Toad School or Goth? But they're both really good EV all mods. Um, Goth is amazing. This top five is really good, and Claudia is okay. Yeah. Well, no, um, uh, no comment. Is, on yeah. No, no comment on Glaceon. Belly Ball might be good. I just don't like. I, I yeah. Been consistently disappointed Belly Ball by it. I just yeah. I just have never really seen it. I've looked mm -hmm. at it and gone, well, I mean, it has some alright things, but yeah. She seems know. very difficult to position, especially for a team whose trick room setter is Toad School. Yeah. Because you have to position it but to I'm... take a hit and then do a hit, which is awkward. No, go away. Yeah. <laughs> You're only here to tell me the weather and occasionally show me random stock words I don't understand, or that the American dollar has gone up relative to the, to the Australian dollar, which is bad for me, but it shows it in the up sign because the, the Americans are going up, even though I'm Australian, so it's really bad. <laughs> uh, sorry, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I accidentally um, highlighted over like the weather thing at the bottom of my screen and it came up with like the pop-ups of like scams. Right. Do you have Windows 11, 12, or whatever the current one is? I'm not. My laptop is like the worst thing. Yeah, I think to ever exist. They um. added to the start bar on one of your screens, not all of them, but only on one of them. The weather and temperature. It's twenty two. Yeah, it's supposed like... to be summer in Brisbane. It should not be twenty two. Um, yeah, apparently it's been an awful summer. I mean, it's been an awful year in Australia with all the rain. I mean, the rain's good, but not always. <laughs> not always. A lot of flooding. Um, yeah, I, I guess you got out, right? Yeah, I mean, it hasn't been... Yeah, I've been here since December, so I haven't been there at all. Oh, you would have been there just at the end, of, like the start of it, though. You would have headed out during... Cause didn't... I can't... Didn't Outer Sydney flood in North last year? Yeah, it did. Oh, I remember that. That was really funny. Yeah. Funny? <laughs> we were driving... People died! We were, we were, okay. like, I was Sorry, driving. I just... <laughs> that was not the word I expected <laughs> you to use to describe the, uh, the, 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 the se severe flooding that, like, you know, destroyed people's house. <laughs> I just, I can't. No remorse. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. That's very, okay, funny, because you were driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, we like, and you hit like a child who was fleeing. Is that is that where this is going? <laughs> no, it's the floods. That they've like you get to the bottom of two hills, and mm. you just where there's normally road, there was just a river. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's very common. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to flooding. We have it all yeah, the time in Brisbane. Garbage bins floating down the road. <laughs> there are like you know multiple supermarkets, and not Australians won't understand this, but. I can only get to the IGA during flooding because the Woolies and Coles are cut off um, by the floods, uh, and IGA is more expensive. Yeah, IGA is not great. No, IGA is very good. Like, genuinely, if I could afford to, I would shop at IGA more because they actually pay the farmers. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I'm poor. It is really expensive though, especially for It turns the out paying life. the farmers like, costs money. No way. I, I know, really? I know. It's shocking. Um, but yeah, Forge is a really good mod. Uh, I know Sora was a bit down on it in their team breakdown thing. I don't remember what they're called, but I think Forge is really good. Sizzle is absolutely incredible, and this combination is really good. We saw Flower Trick Mouse Grata into Anger Point Taurus Aqua, that Terra's Fire, I think, on that team. Maybe Grass do really well in Tainan. Um, leave a comment down below if every time I mention Tainan in uh, one of my videos because. If you don't leave a comment, the video dies. I probably shouldn't have waited till now to say this. <laughs> um, but yeah, Hydreigon, amazing Pokemon. Uh, this team yeah. would really benefit if it had a Kuldengo. This team just seems very um, top-heavy. 
Mm, yeah, yeah. No, um, I, agree. Although, I think, I think it, it plays to the short game, though it does have the ability to play the long game. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's just a lot of things that I feel like you can't bring together that means it's not up. quite wide as, yeah, as you think. Um, I really like Klawitza. I think that yeah, Klawitza's Klawitza's good. Like I said, really I, I like the um the, the top five on Klawitza, and then like whichever NFE you have <laughs> between yeah, Code School and Golf. Uh, yeah. But I feel like Belly Bolt is just kind of unbringable as a mod, which sucks because it seemed like it yeah. would be cool, but then it was just really, really mid. I absolutely loved its reveal thing. Um, but yeah, Glacion Snova is technically a pocket core. I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how to accurately sum up my feelings. Um, I know. I mean, ever since ever since joining right. VBL, all I've all I've seen is Glacion. We're gonna have I to go like... south of the border. You gotta get in the um, the channel. The channel. No, no, the channel. The channel. The channel tunnel. The channel. Oh, yeah. No, that. The thing is, the the channel tunnel is absolutely atrocious. Why? I hate I, the channel what do you expect? <laughs> it's a giant tunnel under the channel. It's Obviously, terrible. it's gonna be that. It's it's only there because it's efficient, not because it's good. Um, but you understand where 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 we've gone now. Yeah, where we've gone, we've gone onto the French frillishes with yep. heaven. Yep, uh, it certainly I is not there. heaven. Um, <laughs> heaven might be the coach, but it's it's unfortunately in France. I hope heaven does their funny edits again because I really like their YouTube. They were one of my uh, favorite YouTubers. Um, actually really like all the VBL contents but Heaven did live comms which were great and then also a MLG edits which were great um, Hatterene, Rotom Heat, Amoongus, Gudra, Spiritomb I'm going to ignore this Mon, Orthworm, Umbreon, Glamet, Veluza, I'm going to semi-ignore and Avalog I'm going to semi-ignore uh, I like this bit a lot Glamet has 105 special attack this is a trick room team. This is a hard trick room team with like what Tailwind Squawkabilly at what I think 92 speed. Uh, yeah. Uh, like Lamet 60 oh speed, God. it can it can abuse. To, okay, this team. This team feels like it's very top heavy as because it, it forces trick room so much and it's got Spiritum, Valusa, and Hatterene's trick room setters. Would you agree with that general concept? Yeah, it looks very, very Trick Room-esque, you know what I mean? Th that's the problem though, is that I feel like with how slow a lot of Pokemon are... Because it's a Trick Room team, but then a lot of the Pokemon are slow, to, yeah. so like... Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know what this team does, um, I think I really have to see what Heaven does. Yeah. Besides, not win the World Cup. Oh, um, too soon. Too, too soon. <laughs> they made it to finals. <laughs> I'm just happy because every time Australia's made it to round of 16, we've been knocked out by the people who won. And if the French won, that wouldn't be true. Um, that's I mean, it. The Italians who knocked us out of round of 16 and won last time, back in 2006, um, d didn't make World Cup this time. And they lost to no. North Macedonia. <laughs> they did. They lost to North Macedonia after winning the Euros. Yeah, I mean, the Euros which, are a joke anyways. Yeah. They don't even have Australia. No, I mean... Or Iran. We're a global powerhouse. We, we did. <laughs> I mean, we're hosting the uh, Women's World Cup next year. Yeah. There's a building It'll right be... next to my workplace. We'll be hosting... I was about to say what, what team it'd be hosting, and then I remembered that you can look up where the teams are being hosted, and you would find my workplace. <laughs> so I'm not going to. <laughs> um, <laughs> it turns out that's a bad idea. Again, the AFP is going to find out where I was. <laughs> they totally don't already know. <laughs> no, um... Funny guys, uh... But yeah, I think this team is, like, slightly into long game because it has some very slow mods. Moongus is a slow mod because, again, regenerated makes slow. Um... Umbreon is super slow, Orthworm is fairly slow, Spiritum can be slow, Gudra can easily go slow, yeah. and it doesn't do tempo amazingly, Rotom can go easily go slow. So really what, like Hatterene, and then like Glamet, Veluza. Just a slow, a sl it's a slow team that has to go fast because it's Trick Room, which I don't, 
fully understand. So I'm going to put it towards the middle, but slightly into long game. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is a mid-range team though. It's just a team that is a fast archetype with slow mons. Yeah. I think our final team, the Grafton Gegnars and Cano. Mm -mm. Do you want to yeah. bring us through I our think... team? So you've got the Murkrow, the Gengar, Tatsudozo, uh, Heracross, Bisharp, Espeon, Hippowdon, Pikachu, Bronzor, and Pyro. I think, I think you'll the find thing it's that Brosnor. Uh, it's Pierce Brosnor. Brosnor. Yeah, Pierce Brosnor. Apologies. Yep. So uh, that, that, that guy died in Black Adam. You know, put some respect on his name. Black Adam was not great. Black Adam was a film that um, I liked when they did things that were in the comics, and otherwise, I, I don't. They, I think that they wrote it with like um, a Fast and Furious contract where the fire, the 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 Rock was literally not allowed to lose a fight because yeah. he doesn't ever, mm -hmm. and. It's the one thing dumb. I never understood, Black Adam, at the start, they have that, um... Oh, I this can't is now a movie it's review card channel. <laughs> Leave a comment down below what movie you want us to talk about next, and by us, uh, we'll see if Big Man is, is, is willing to come back again after this video. <laughs> They'll be calling for my removal. Yeah, or I, I'm sorry, I meant like, um, like you're willing to come back to my channel. Um, sorry, we should probably talk about the team before we go into Black Adam, but we can talk about it we after. Um, Tatsudozo, but they have Murkrow. They do have Murkrow. I think you I honestly mean, just bring Tatsugiri with Storm Drain. <laughs> yeah. Um, this team is fast. It's good. Like, yeah. the, the, the actually having fast Pokemon is a good thing. Uh, Bishop is one of the best EV Olight users. Pikachu, Light Ball, very good. Bronzor is technically one of the bulkiest Pokemon with EV Olight. However, it lost Psy Wave back when it was cut in Gen 8, and that really dampened its effectiveness. I, it also doesn't have Toxic. Like, it did get Nightshade, even though Bronzong did. So it's not very good, unfortunately, but it can set up Trick Room sometimes. Um, unaware, good. Heracross is good. Yuspion. Gengar. Mm. Strong. They, they have... They have... What? Five strong special attackers in a format where they are absolutely premium. Like, Pyro is yeah. the only one that I'm not even, like, big on. But it's still okay. Hyper Voice is still good. And Fire Blast and Heat Wave is still good. Hippo is funny. Um, they can Earthquake an extra Bronze or Macro. But not a lot else. <laughs> mm. what, what are your general thoughts? I'd say this team is pretty top-heavy. Yeah, is I, it top heavy? I agree. I don't know. Its top is so broad. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, a bit strange. The, the Tatsugiri Dondozo really throws me off with The top is eight how... months. Like, if you take out Tatsugiri Dondozo, right, did you say that you don't come? The remaining six months are still, like, a decent team. Yeah. And then you can put them on the team, and you can put Pikachu on a team because it's their fake-out user, and it's still really blisteringly strong, even though it lost E-Speed, which would have made it really, really, really strong. Um, and, like, Pyro's still okay, and Bronzor can has a specific niche this is a good yeah. team I, I like i'd say pretty this is good, a yeah. i'd say this team is towards the middle where its top is, is pretty strong but i that's donzo is pretty good pretty yeah. cost effective for what they are um, and what they force your opponent to bring because if you just bring the mods as mods your opponent is gonna like lead around them and then you know on, on top of building around sorry he's gonna have to build around them and then also lead around there which is difficult yeah. to do Beyond that, uh, yeah. Is this team tempo? I would say this is relatively tempo, though it has a few mods yeah. that can go like him. I just remember Bishop. I think I already said Bishop. Bishop is so bulky. Um, oh, and Murkrow also technically can run E feel light. Dude, this team has got all the, the couple mods, man. This team has definitely got a couple mods. Um, I'd say it's a bit tempo, but it can easily go a long game. Mm -hmm. yeah, I wish no, I had I trapping agree. so you could perish trap. I guess that's just my general thing for when yeah, the pe people have like a parasol option. Um, yeah, this this was a team. Yep. Grafton Gengars. It this is this is where we're ultimately yeah. looking. No top heavy long game teams, um, which I don't think is true. Am I going insane?
No, I mean, I think that's... Phoenix sounds. Like. Did I put... Okay, I'm gonna put them down more into long game. Compared to a lot of these other teams, I'd say they're... they're okay. <laughs> Alright. Insane rant aside. Um, what did you not like about Black Adam? So... Okay. There's the, the one part at the start where Black Adam comes out of the cave okay. and all the army guys are there and they all, you know... He kills a bunch of people. Attacking. He kills a bunch of people, but he also gets injured by the, the, the blue rocket or what... I don't know what the blue rocket yeah. is, but it's made out of the, the stuff. Yeah, that's a that's just a plot device for them to be able to move him on, right? No, no, it's the, it's the rocket. I don't know what it's no, I, I know what you mean, but the the idea the the reason that he's injured by that is so that they can, like, bring him into the situation where he's forced to interact with the mother and child. Yeah, no, so I completely agree with that. But then, whenever he appears anywhere, he never gets hit by. There's horse. never another one of those rockets. Yeah, because it's a plot device, not actually like part of the world development, right? So I I, 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 I like I mean, it's convenient and it's not like great. I, I don't think that ranks up highly on the issues I have with it. I just, um, like, I feel like if at some point he'd actually lost a fight to the Hawkman. Yeah. Then, they, like, he, he wasn't taught a lesson and they, like, set up this lesson of, like, but then nothing happens. He's, ne he's never truly evil. He only ever kills goons, which are exactly what other people do as well, right? Like, Captain America kills goons. Yeah. Um, so it just doesn't work. Whereas, like, if you compare it to uh, Namor from Black Panther 2, if you watch that, Wakanda Forever. Mm, I haven't watched it yet. I was... It's a good film. It, it does what Black Adam is trying to do, but better. But uh, it's... Right. I mean, I, <laughs> I was going to say, it's less pandering to comic fans. I think Marvel is just better at doing the comic book fan, like, um, pandering. Like, you know, they, they, they shoehorned in a scene at the end of Black Adam where Adam Smasher and Black Adam, like, a, like Adam Smasher is like, you know, we should work, we should do teamwork, and it's like, I enjoyed doing teamwork with you, which is just entirely because in the comics, they're best friends. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, beyond that, how do you generally feel about the power level of this um, draft so far? Do you think that these teams are generally pretty, like, compared to, I don't know, what'd you say? I guess you've mostly done singles. Um, would you say that these, <laughs> these teams seem strong compared to singles teams? I don't know. I know well, last I mean... gen, people would say that or, or like a Gen 7 people would be like, oh man, that team is so strong when they looked at like Feromosa. But mm. I don't think there's a similar mod here. Probably just because the Paradox no. ruins the band. It's Palafin. I mean, yeah, well, Palafin didn't get drafted in this... Div. In the, I took it this... round one in the other Div. Yeah, it didn't get drafted in, in this div. I mean, um, Palafin's an interesting thing, though. I mean, what else is banned? I feel like... Stone. But it's 4v4, so it doesn't matter. Mm. Um, no one drafted Houndstone. The, the Sand teams, neither of them drafted Houndstone. But yeah. No. So, generally speaking, would you think these teams seem strong? Um. Yes or no answer? I mean, I feel like they're probably... Some of them are quite strong, but mm. they're not. there's not really that one sort of a team where it's like, wow, okay. Um. Do you think Tay is going to drop a game? Like he, he's going to go into game three in one of his series this season. Yes or no? Um, Leave a comment down below if you guys think that Tay is either not going to drop a game or is going to drop a single game. And Tay, I know that whatever you're going to comment is going to be very funny. Anyways, um, sorry, I just looked at the time. Do you want to say thanks to uh, everyone, Mr. B? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry you had to put up with me for so long. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we got to the end, so... All right. Thanks. And for, guys, I forgot for. to mention this at the start, but this is the Christmas special. <laughs>